Hello, this is Dan Baker, Colorado State University, doing a review of section 5.7 out of our Hibbler textbook, Constraints and Statical Determinacy. Just a reminder that Constraints and Statical Determinacy is really looking at the question, how do we know if a rigid body can be solved using statics? So all the problems that you solve in the book have basically been pushed through this filter, and this just kind of shows the method over which um, we determine that a problem is truly solvable in statics. So let's break this into two different pieces. First, we'll start talking about constraints, and then we'll move on to determinacy itself. So constraints, constrained, the definition is fixed in space. It cannot move, basically. So um, we will not move in translation. It will also not move in rotation. So let's take a look at those two different pieces. First, we'll look at no translation. Really, the question that we can ask to determine if there's translation or not are, are all supports parallel? Now, keep in mind that in constraints and statical determinacy, we're primarily looking at support force components. And so when I say supports, I mean the components of each individual support. If all of them are parallel, the body then could be pushed perpendicular to those supports. So hence, it would not be fixed for a translation. If the support forces are not parallel and components of them are going in all directions, then we would not have a direction that we could push the body uh, for translation. The next one is no rotation. And the test for no rotation is if the support force components do not or cannot intersect at a single point. A single point's bad, multiple points is good. And so what, what you want to find here is that every point on or off the body has resistance to rotation. So let's look at that graphically. And so we can see here that if we sketch in our lines of action of pin forces here at the lower left corner, roller forces over here on the right hand side, and these lines of action intersect at two separate points, right? Here's one point, here's another point. Two points of intersection is good. Um, one point would be bad. So if we flip that roller over onto its side and all of our lines of action here line up intersecting at this single pin, we find that it is not fixed for rotation. Another way you can think of this is if you sum the moments at this pin, there's no support forces that would help resist any kind of rotation. So we could start to rotate the body um, about this point right here. So that is fixed for translation and then fixed for rotation. Now let's take a look at whether or not it is determinate. So determinate really is looking at if the number of equations is equal to the number of unknowns, equivalent equations of unknowns. And so if we call the letter N the number of our unknowns, if we have three unknowns, we know that three unknowns is a good number for a two-dimensional uh, free body diagram because we can use three equations, some of the force x, some of the force y, some of the moments. We could use three moment equations. It just depends on the kind of problem. But fundamentally, three equations maximum uh, in order to solve that problem. And so uh, if we have an unknown of three, that's great. Three unknowns, three equations. If we have less than three, it turns out that the body is not fixed. Okay, so less than three means that there's either two or one. Um, if there's two, let's take a look at two first, so that you have, say if these two rollers right here, um, two lines of action of these two support forces can only do one of two things. One is they can either intersect, or two is they can be parallel. If these two intersect, it would not be fixed for rotation. If they are parallel, it wouldn't be fixed for translation. So that's the whole idea here. If it's less than three, they're not fixed. If it's greater than three, what we run into is we don't have enough equations. It doesn't mean that it's not fixed. It just means that in statics, we run out of equations to solve for the number of unknowns. And here's an example of this. All right, next up, we're going to look at an example. We're going to kind of walk through this of which of these bodies are solvable in statics. Um, so keep in mind, there's fundamentally three criteria. The first one I typically will start with is what are the number of support force components? We're looking for three. Uh, less than three, it's not fixed. More than three, it's not determinant. So our golden number is three. Uh, the second thing, once a body has three support force components, is are all the support forces parallel? If they're parallel, it will, not fit, it will be not fixed for translation. And then finally, if it if it if it satisfies those first two criteria, I take a look at are all three support force components do they intersect at one single point? And if they intersect at one single point, we find out it is not fixed for rotation. So go ahead and try that here on this example, and then I'll go through each of these to justify whether they're solvable or not. All right, so here are the solutions. It turns out there's three of these that are solvable in statics. Let's work through these one by one. 
the first one here, we have a pin up at the top. Pins have two support force components. If I model those in the X direction and the Y direction, we can say we have a vertical line of action, a horizontal line of action. We have a third little two force member that's providing support here on the lower end of this, a horizontal force. The lines of action of these two forces intersect at two points at this pin here and also a point down here located behind this two force member. Two points is good. So that justifies that it is fixed for rotation. These support force components are not parallel therefore it is fixed for rotation we have support force both vertically and horizontally and then finally there's three of them n equals three and so all three criteria are satisfied hence one is solvable uh, next up for number two and i'll start going through these in the order in which um, i actually look at them and so if i have two pins on either the left hand and the right hand side of number two i have a total of four support force components hence with four support force components it is not solvable in statics we have an indeterminate Permanent system, um, which is not solvable in statics. Number three, um, we have actually only have two support forces. There's a two force member here at the top, a two force member here at the side. Recalling that a two force member has one single unknown. We don't know the magnitude of the force. We do know its direction. So hence n is equal to two. That is also not solvable in statics. It turns out that this one, these two support forces intersect at a single point. Thus, it is not fixed for rotation about this single point is really the bottom line of why it is not both fixed and determinate. Number four here is a bit of, it's a kind of a tricky one. It's, it's one that includes a support force couple, right? This fixed connection would have both a horizontal and a vertical support force. We could model it as those two. And that would additionally have a resistance to rotation about that same fixed point. And so if you can think about the three criteria, there's three unknowns, one, two, three, the third being the moment. It is not um, or excuse me, it is fixed for translation because the two support force components are perpendicular, not parallel to one another. And then the third thing is, we talked about the lines of action intersecting a single point. The lines of action of these two forces do intersect at this single point, but there's resistance to rotation from this moment. So this one is fixed and also is determinant, hence it's solvable in statics. On to number five, three support forces, one, two, three, two force members. They are not parallel. Both of those are great. But if we take a look at the lines of action, all intersecting at this single point down here on the bottom, that would make this point here not, um, resi not resistant to rotation. So this one would not be solvable due to a failure um, in fixity for rotation. Uh, number six, we have a roller with a horizontal force here, uh, pin, which you can model as having a horizontal support force, also a vertical support force. Those intersect at two separate points. One is up here, one is down here um, on the body itself. And so two points of, of intersection is good with our three support forces. They're also non-parallel, hence this one is solvable in statics. Next up here, we have a fixed connection plus a two force member. We talked about this one up here having three unknowns. So one, two, three, if we add a fourth, we get n is equal to four. That one is not solvable in statics because it is indeterminate. And then number eight, we have three support force components, a two force member, a roller, and another two force member. They are all on their own lines of action and those lines of action are all parallel. And if they're all parallel, this is not fixed for translation. Um, thanks to your attention. Hope you learned a bit about fixity and statical determinacy from this video.